Welcome guys, welcome to this video. In this video we're going to see how access token or refresh tokens work in a system. So if you want to implement something like this using PHP, so this is the right video for you. So here I have this application created and if I click on login, I'm providing the name and the password by default. It tells me the refresh token is expired on this date and time. And if the refresh token is expired, it is not going to generate any access token. So what are we going to do here is we're going to uh, generate an access token and make it expire. And if the access token is expired, we will check that refresh token is there and active. If refresh token is active, we will regenerate the access token. And in case refresh token is expired, we will not generate access token. So here, the refresh token currently is expired and that's why it's not generating the access token anymore All right so when we load this app straight away i have the name and password already filled here and when i hit login it is going to tell us that the access token is created and refresh token is created uh, the access token is valid to 427 so we are here 422 currently and here 432 when the refresh token expires so we're going to see that how it regenerates using a refresh token. So if I show you the database structure here, I have users table where we have the user um, name Manu and password one to three. Quite basic just to uh, uh, see the point how things working with tokens. I have a token here. I'm saving it here. Expiry time, saving it here. So this is the access token expiry time. Then we have refresh token uh, table. And here we have a refresh token with the expiry time. All right, so what is what is happening now? Currently, if I hit login again, it's not gonna do anything because uh, what happens is on click of login, it checks if the access token is valid. So if it is valid, we are not doing anything. So uh, access token is valid because it's going to expire on 4:27. Current time is 4:23, so we need to wait a, a few minutes, and after that, we will see how we using refresh token. This will update the access token. And this time for the refresh token stays the same. And that's how it basically works. So whenever you have an access token given that's going to be for a minute or for five minutes or 10 minutes, you always want to renew uh, the access token based on refresh token. Refresh token might be active for a day or a week, depending on your application's requirement, and you can make it work. So we'll see how it works. All right, so it says 427.47, here it's 4.27, I hit login again. It stays the same, I'm waiting for it turns to 4.28. Then we are going to check in and it's, it should be renewed because the refresh token is valid till 32. So 4.32 uh, is the time till we can renew the access token. All right, so I hit it again. Let's see, and here it is. You can see that it updated to 4.32 now, the expiry time of the uh, access token is because in code it checked, okay, refresh token is valid, renew the access token. So it renewed the access token now, and you can allow user to do whatever they want to do based on this access token if it is valid. All right, so you can see that we are successfully validating here. So let's see in the code how you can implement in your application. As for this, I'm going to use the pre-made uh, theme and uh, that is just a simple HTML and code. So this is the file. I have some HTML code going on in a form created here. And also I have a style.css where we have some styles going on. Nothing special. So basically you know, I'm, I created a JWT folder and that is inside the XAMPP htdocs. And there is the JWT there. The, I have these two files basically. This code is how we are seeing this theme. So here if I refresh, you will see that there is only name and the password it is asking for in the database. I'm going to clear the database. So we have refresh token uh, table here. Structure is user ID. We are saving refresh token, long text, expiry, purchase, and create a timestamp. And the same way user. And here I'm going to leave, uh, actually what I do, I delete it and reinsert it. So here in user table, I'm going to insert one value that's going to be Manu. 
and password123. And why I'm putting these values? Because I set these values at default here. So you can have it as you want. Uh, just to make things quicker, I'm doing it this way. So now if I hit go, it is going to put an entry here. Uh, the username and password123. Token and expire. Uh, token expire, we are going to put it through code. All right, so for working with this, we need a package, and that's the Firebase PHP JWT. This is the one, and uh, we need to run a command. So we have a composer. Make sure you have a composer installed in your system, and we need to run this command. So what I do, I copy this command, go back here, and now I'm going to open the terminal. So I'm already in this folder, and I'm going to run this command. Now it's going to create a vendor folder and in composer.json we have the package which has the version 6.3. All right. Okay, so far so good. Now what we want to do, we want to see what happens once the user hits the submit. So as we are working with PHP, I want to uh, do it everything on the same file on top so that things remain simple. So I put here PHP and then here I'm going to say First thing first, I want to uh, display all the adders. So if any adder occurs, display it. That's the reason uh, we are saying y'all and one. Then I want to start this session. And so we will be using session. So it's going to be session underscore start. Okay. And now this is the form and we are using the method post. So we will be posting the content. So we will need to catch the post. So when user hits uh, the uh, submit button, which is here, input submit, and uh, we want to get the name and password. So I, I set the values here. You can put the values. In, you can remove these two. Then you have to put manually. And it is a post, so we need to catch it. So here I simply say if the form is submitted, so we say is set, and it's going to be dollar underscore post. And here, what we're going to do? We're going to get check the submit. So this submit that we are doing here, and we are checking for this there. So here, simply, if it is submit, what do we want to do? The first thing is that you might want to put the validation, so you can put it like, for example, if uh, dollar post, you can check for each value, like name, and uh, for in our case, we are providing it straight away. So. I'm just showing you like if you want to put it how you can do it you can say set or you can uh, put it like this if it equals to empty or if you want to also check for password so you can do that too so if I push here and I say pass all right so if the both values are not present we can give some kind of message so we can put here session and I'm gonna pass uh, here a key I would say message and we can say all right if it is an eight we need login uh, and password required so this we can display the user and here we simply say redirect so here header and what do you want to do we as we are working with localhost so we said localhost slash uh, uh, Actually, it's going to be location, so location, and location's value is going to be slash jwt slash, okay. So it's going to redirect back there, and here we can say return. Okay, so we won't take any further. Okay, so, but in our case, we are already having the values uh, here added, so you need to remove it if you want to put validation like this. So. Now, if we have the username and password all set, what do we want to do? First thing first, I, I want this variable to be empty so that we can have some value in it. So I say it will be updated only if the name and password is not provided, otherwise it will be an empty string. Now, I want to get the time, current time. So it's going to be now, dollar now. And what I want to do, I want to say, I'm going to use a new uh, date time so it's going to be capital D and capital T daytime class like this and you can pass here a parameter like now to get the time for now and we want to set I'm in Australia Melbourne so I'm gonna put the 
just like that. So here, I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it here again. Now this time here, I'm going to put here Australia and Melbourne. You can choose your time zone, whatever uh, you uh, prefer. All right, so here the dollar user, and that's going to be equal to dollar underscore uh, post. And here, what you're going to pass is, is the login. Why login? Because that's the uh, name here. So name and password. So we need to use that. All right, same way. We need to set the password. So it goes like this, password. And I also want to call it here password. All right, we get the values. Now what I want to do. So first thing first, uh, for the this example, we already added the user here in the database. Refresh token is empty. We will be putting it through the code. So we already have a user. So you get the idea. So what we can do, we can get this user and verify first. So here I say simply, uh, first of all, we need to create a DB connection. So I say here dollar DB, and here my SQLI, and that's going to be connect. And I want to connect with localhost. And the second value is going to be the username, which is going to be root. Password, there's no, no password. I'm not using any. And then the table name, which is JTest. All right, so this is gonna get the connection for us. Now, we would be, I'm gonna add here a comment. And I'm getting user details from database. All right, so let's do that. Here I say dollar SQL. It's gonna be my SQLI query. And what's going to be the query first? It's going to take the database connection. Then we want to pass the query. And I want to say here select all from. And we want to pass the users table because I have users there. And then we have where name like. So we are getting the username here. So we want to get the. Uh, with that name, so we we name like, and I want to pass here percent sign percent sign, and inside it we want to pass dollar user. All right, so it's gonna get us the name, uh, and here we can put a condition. Okay, so here we say check if user exists. All right, and then we say here if my SQLI num uh, rows and we want to pass here dollar SQL so it should what happens is it is going to get us the uh, user from database my SQL gonna fetch the number of rows we got and it's gonna be one uh, so if one this condition will run if zero then it can, this condition won't run so now we need to deal with the tokens okay so here the code starts for token so once we have the user so first thing first to working with tokens, we need a secret key. So dollar secret uh, key. Now this secret key is something that you can have in your .env file or somewhere where you, and that you don't push to get, and you will be generating the tokens. So uh, yeah, it should be like saved. If it is in .env file, you are you know, hiding it in your uh, application, then it is totally fine. Okay, so I have a key created already, and also I'm gonna put the comment as well for that. So here, first, what I do is simply I'm gonna copy here. Just random key. You can put anything here. Um, it should be just a secure key because no one should be able to find it. And I put here like hide it in and .env and never push to git all right uh, github or, or repo okay all right so we have secret key now what do we need now second is the server name and in our case here it's localhost and then we need the uh, 
basically when we want to expire uh, the tokens. So for that, we want to use simple stuff. So here we have now that we generated current time when this code runs. So for the expiration, we will use something similar. Here again, we are calling the same. This time, instead of now, I'm going to put here 10 uh, plus 10, and I say minutes. So whatever is the current time at 10 minutes, that's the time. And what is this going to be? It's going to be issue, uh, I'll call it issued uh, add one R. All right. So whatever is the issued time, add a one R. Actually, we are not adding one R, we need 10 minutes. So Okay, just making the variable that way, but uh, it shouldn't be, uh, you can name it anything you like, uh, just to making things quite simpler, uh, just putting that like this. Because if tomorrow you change it to 20, uh, then it should, uh, you will have to change the variable name, which is not a good practice. So, uh, yeah, just for this example, I'm using and making the thing is simple because we will not be changing it here. So here, what we want to do now, the next, uh, this is the 10 minutes at the time, okay, for the issue time. So uh, what it is going to be is for the, uh, let's say, for the refresh token, we will use this time. And for the access token to expire, we put here dollar expire. And for that, what I want to do, I want to call dollar now. All right, so dollar now is here, the current time on the code runs. And what we want to do, we want to modify uh, the uh, time. So we will say here, uh, modify, and in the date class, the date time class, you can do this. In modify, we will say, okay, whatever is the time at five minutes. All right, so, so whatever, when the code generates, it is going to make it uh, expire the excess token in five minutes so yeah, yeah to change the format of time you can put format function and you can pass string like uh, d dash m dash uh, y h here and for r then i for minute and then for second for s all right okay so we have the when we expire our token when we expire a refresh token so now it's time we work on generating them. So here, uh, let's generate a token. So for that, we need to create our data and equals to, and we need to pass an array. Now, if you go back to the PHP WDK documentation here, they have something like this here going on, if you see here. So, So you can see that they are encoding JWT and they are pro using a private key and stuff uh, like that. So we will do the similar stuff. So here, what do we want to do? I want to pass here I at, which is going to be uh, basically the issued at time. So it's going to be dollar now. And we can use the formatting of, of this type. So we can put straight away like this and put comma here and I'm gonna pass here a comment as well so I call here issued at okay then we want to pass another value it's going to be ISS and this is going to be the uh, dollar server name all right so it's this is going to be the issuer okay the server name then we have the expiry so when the token expires, we can put here dollar expire. So copy this and paste here. Then we can pass here the, if you want in your token, you want to pass the user uh, data out. So you can do that. So here user. So uh, basically then you, when you send this token to somewhere, they extract uh, the username from your token. So here we say user name should be inside quotes like this and then user 
and then we want the password here password and it's going to be dollar password all right okay so far so good but we have here something not right uh, okay so uh, the thing is going wrong is in because it's an array we need to have an arrow like this not be equal to sign so I just do that I replace it with that and now it should be fine so there shouldn't be any error okay we have data here now let's work on generation of token so if you notice we are already getting the data from database so here uh, we are getting the user so here we just check that okay if the user is in database then do this stuff all right so if the user is already there then what we can do I missed a comma here I think okay semicolon so here what I want to do I need to run a while loop while and I see here dollar row while we have a user in database get that user my SQL uh, my SQLI and it's gonna be fetch and we want to fetch a sock and we want to pass here dollar SQL all right just like that and here now if I want to see we can see here what we are getting so I see here var dump dollar row and we should get the user here so let's see if we are getting it or not so I'm just gonna go back here and hit login and uh, again thing is happening so we are saying okay press submit if it is submitted we are taking here username this is it's not gonna go here because we have username already provided it goes here and it should do what we are doing so far so let's do one thing I'm gonna put here all right go back there get it it says dollar row in line nine okay okay guys so I made a mistake here uh, we are getting login so if you go in form I gave the name as login but here in the form I said name so we need to pass login here and other than that all looks good we get this and here you can put like this name like that and yeah name like that should be fine now now it should give us the row so if I go back here refresh and hit login uh, now it says daytime error so uh, the daytime error is basically uh, we need to include we using this class where I put here like this and it should fix it so we are using daytime there and here as well oh. Yeah, we need to pass the date time and then zone as well so it's gonna be zone like this and uh, the same way it goes to wherever I define the time zone so time zone defined here too so date time takes time zone like that so we are passing it now it should be all right so now if I go here and refresh it should be all right okay so you can see that we're getting the name Manu and uh, token all the fields whatever fields we require so our code reaches here that's perfectly fine now now we can go and execute further so if I see here if you notice here we have ID and ID is 4 we can use that ID so if you go to database you can see ID is 4 and we're getting that ID so we can use it so what I do is simply say here dollar user ID and then dollar row and to access the ID we simply pass it as an array key so here it's gonna get us the ID so now we know that in the database we don't have the token it is empty right 
so we can put a check so what I do is simply say if dollar row and then I put the key value which is the uh, uh, token or we can check for token expires both the fields and anything you want to check here so simply copy this All right, and I want to say that whatever value you get, because it's going to process an empty string. And I want to say here, take it as an integer, because if it has going to have a value, then it's going to be some kind of number. So this is going to pass in a zero. So I'm checking here if it is a zero then do this and otherwise we want to do something else so we can put in our else statement that other stuff all right so now what do we want to do first of all i want to generate the access token so here i say generating access token all right so you get the idea we are checking there is no access token expiry present that means there is no access token generated so far so let's generate an access token now for generating access token, we need to import the, the JWT classes as well as the vendor folder. So the vendor folder as well as the package inside it. Uh, so we need to load this file as well as this Firebase classes. So for doing that, all you need to do is you need to include these three lines. So here we are using the Firebase key, JWT, and when to load. Now, uh, why I'm doing this this way? Because you can check the docs, they are using it this way. You can see the, they call here. All right, so far so good. Now we go back here. We uh, include the, the JWT files. We are using the vendor and we are including our load file because it's inside the vendor. So vendor folder and the outload. Okay, so we included it. So now we can use it to generate the key. So here, um, all I want to say, I want to say JWT in code. So first I give a access token and I'm going to token, then I say JWT and then I say here in code. All right, and we're going to pass here dollar data. Now dollar data is the one we defined here with the all the detail and username password. So that we define and after that, once you pass it, we pass the dollar secret key. So the one I told you, you need to hide it inside .env file and don't share it with your Apple. Now, the algorithm we are going to use is HS512. You can read more about these on the website. Let me go here on this. They are using RS250. So you can see more about them, like why and how, and what is the difference, and things like that. But for now, I'm being just going to use this one. And this is going to generate a token for us. So I'm assuming that this variable now contains a token once we run it. The alongside, when we generate the access token, I want to generate the uh, refresh token as well, so that we have the refresh token there. So for refresh token, I'm going to go above, copy the data again, and going to put it here. And need to change a few things here. First now, format, that stays the same. And then we have the server name is fine. And for expire, we have the... All right, for expire, we can create a variable. So I go up here where we created the variable here we are adding the 10 minutes here so I simply say dollar expire and let's call it refresh so we are ex expiring the refresh token here and uh, then what I do instead of adding this 10 minutes or anything I say you should refresh because you might change this so that doesn't look good so I'm gonna use this I'm gonna put this here and after that I'm gonna pass the format. What I'm going to I'm going to maintain and same you know complete application. So it's gonna be like this. So now this is the expiration time, which is going to be 10 minutes later of current time. So uh, so we will allow the refresh token to expire in 10 minutes. 
right so this goes here like this all right so that looks good so far and now we in the refresh token i only pass the username for now okay now once we have the you know, token created and refresh token created if you notice i have a database where i have token in a as well as we have refresh token tables so we need to update them there so let's save these so that according to those we can use these so i say store uh excess token now you might do insert query but in my case i'm going to do update query because i already inserted a user straight away so uh, in your app you might need to do uh, through insert so i see here in my sql query now we have dollar and db access to it so it comes here and then we run the query so i see here uh, update users set and i'm saying here token equals and we pass here dollar access token and we also want to set the token expiry so it's going to be token the score expires so what i do I break it into a new line here and i set it to equal to it's going to be dollar uh, expire because that's the variable we are using for expiring the token right now this query will update it now here what do we want to do we want to also insert the refresh token so here we say storing refresh token all right so i'm just gonna copy this and paste here now query will be Difference. So I say here insert into and uh, refresh token. So our database table name is refresh token. And then we want to do what? We want to say uh, there are fields and we need to use those fields. So here user ID, refresh token, expiry, created in this rat. Okay user underscore id comma then we have the refresh underscore token and the expiry of it so it's expiry expiry all right all right and we want to put the values values I break it down here and put the values here all right so it's gonna be dollar user id comma refresh token so it's going to be dollar refresh token and then at last we need the expiry so dollar and we created this expire refresh that goes here and i forgot the single quote so it goes like this all right all looks good so it's going to save the tokens in the database for us and once we have the tokens saved there we can use them so here after this all happens what i'm going to do i want to say all right if we have the access token available to us let's use it so what i say as a dollar underscore session now you can use database as well as you can use session entirely it's up to you uh, depending on the functionality how you want to do it so i'm going to put values in session so that we can call so access underscore token and then as we have the access token we can set in this session all right so i'm gonna copy paste this because we have refresh token again so here access token we can call it uh, access token expires and that's going to be equal to expiry of it here and the rest is the refresh token so so refresh token and i call expires all right so copy this and paste here 
all right so far so good and here i want to put a message that we will display in the front end so uh, if i go above if you remember we did that a message here login required so the same way we want to pass here a message so what do we want to do here we want to say access token generated all right and when access to be generated we want to redirect user and we want to say location that's going to be gwt and here return so it doesn't execute any further okay so far so good so what happens is if i explain it one more time so if we see that okay goes in user table if there is no token present we are basically if there is a record present we are going inside here we are checking uh, fetching here we are checking if there is token present if not present then we are getting inside it and we're generating the token as well as the refresh token we are putting in there so once this code runs it is going to put the refresh token for us here as well as it's going to add the token and expiry all right so uh before running this, let's deal with the else statement as well, and then we will deal with it. So let's do it. So here we say, in case token present in database, then we are dealing here. Now we need to check the current time as well, because whenever we click, so I'm gonna copy the statement I'm going to put it here and I'm gonna call it current uh, time all right so we have current time here and then the thing we want to check is if dollar underscore session and inside it we want to check if there is the uh, access token expired this one so we're going to check if the token expired this session value has the time so the when the access token expires we want to check it with the current time like if it is expired or not so we can check like if it is less than uh, current time dollar current it will check us okay the token is expired or not so uh, here uh, I would say means access token expired so this code will run and then otherwise uh, here access token is valid all right uh, and not expired so here where it is going to be expired we need to deal with it so first of all I'm going to do a select query from the refresh token. So I'm going to copy this query from here. I'm going to put it here. And let's do this. So here I say select. Um, and what do we want to do? Select all from. And we say refresh underscore token. And what do we want to do? We want to get uh, the everything where the user ID is this. So we say. Uh, where user underscore id equals dollar user id all right this these needs to be lowercase okay so select our from it should be fine now we should get the data so i simply put it in here in response variable and we can use it now so I just make some space and then once we have a response we want to say while we have a response received so our response row is equal to my SQLI underscore fetch a sock we put here dollar response and loop through it and here I want to say uh, check if the if is set dollar response row and we are looking for access token if it is present 
So it should be present because we are selecting and uh, this is running in else. That means the access token is there. So it is going to get the access token. Uh, sorry, we are doing the refresh token, so it should be refresh token here. Let's maybe refresh token. So once we have a refresh token as the as the access token we is expired already, so we need to check if the refresh token is valid or not. So what do we do? I'm going to uh, here simply I'm gonna say if a dollar response row and I want to check the field the field is in refresh token it's expiry so we're gonna check that field so I say here expiry so this is the field and if it is less than current time so let's copy this and I'm gonna put in the same way current time I'm gonna put here and it is gonna get us the if the token a refresh token is expired or not that's what this is for and if not what we want to do we want to put some um, we can put some uh, uh, if current time yeah the, here it's going to be if refresh token is expired all right so here refresh token expires we put here something this like so copy this and paste here so expiry is already gone and the, the time is more than expired time that means it's yeah it's passed already so we have the expired access uh, refresh token and refresh token expired we can say here the time for it so we say refresh token expired on and you can uh, show the time so I put here the time like this all right so it will be in the message like okay this one is expired and as the refresh token is expired we can unset the values so you can unset uh, these variables that we set here so uh, I'm gonna unset these variables so I'm gonna simply paste here cut this paste here semicolon copy paste this one is going to be the like this all right and it goes back to the header and notifies the user all right your fish token is expired okay this is so far so good now now this is this happened is refresh token is expired now what about if the refresh token is not expired so if refresh token is not expired so we said generate new access token all right so you get the idea user clicks again and the access token is expired we check uh, we go here and we say all right check for the refresh token if it is all expired as or not if refresh token is expired we simply say all right your refresh token is expired and if the refresh token is not expired we say all right let's go ahead actually we need this else statement inside it here so that uh, if the token is and not expired then generate a new ex access token yeah so for generating access token it's going to be quite same so we did the generation here so access token so actually not here yeah here access token we are generating copy this paste here so we see generate the access token and it will generate a new token for us now once it is generating a new token we need to remove the previous token and update it so we say here uh, update access token 
and here simply I'm going to run a query so that we can have a record of it so if copy paste and here what do we want to say we want to say uh, set this token perfectly in expiry to expiry all right so it is going to uh, obtain the uh, that way I noticed I made a mistake here it's gonna be token like this and that means the same is happening here too so we need to correct it in a moment we will see all, all things working and if there is something breaks we're gonna uh, debug it but just uh, you know, bear with me we will be making it working now we have a new access token and new expiry time so what we can do here we simply update the sessions as well so here we can just copy this and paste it here so your session now has a new uh, time now let's work on this condition here we said like okay if the uh, here so here we are saying if access token is valid and not expired in that case I simply for now just want to redirect user so uh, we say here header location and we just redirect back to the JWT all right and here return okay so far so good and I also put this here yep. all right guys so let's test this code if it is working or uh, what is happening here so if I refresh now and uh, let's, let's let me refresh uh, okay so we are here uh, one thing I missed uh, basically because I have to set few variables to display the errors uh, let's do that before running this because we are setting the message and we are also setting the access tokens so we need to show them to user so let's add it here um, where we have our form uh, what I do here is create a small and I'm gonna pass here a class and a call in this class message and I believe uh, there is already CSS for this class there so you can see that message and access and refresh there's CSS already there so we can use these classes so here what I want to do I want to run the PHP code and here I'm gonna say so we want to display the uh, messages so if first I say here if is set and if it's set, we have the session value access token. Uh, actually, access token expire. If this value is set, we put here. And what we want to do, we want to echo something. And uh, that echo needs to be uh, diff. And I showed you the class, so we're going to use these classes. So we got a class, class here, access. All right. And I'm going to say access token. I always type token wrong. Sorry about that. So token valid till and then we put the time. So the time for expires when this expires. So we put it here like this and then we close the div. And I think that's it. So I just copy this statement and put it again here. And this time it's going to be refresh token. Let's go for the refresh uh, token where we are setting it. So here, go down and update it. Where you refresh. So it will tell the this time here it should be refresh okay so it will let the user know like what time the tokens will expire and I say else if and what are we gonna do we want to say here is set and this is going to be the message so I'm gonna copy this all right I'm gonna 
call it message. Now I use here the snake guessing as here capital uh, uppercase all. That's not a good practice. So maintain in a whole application if you're using snake case, use snake case. If you're using um, camel casing, use camel casing. It should be everywhere the same. So for now, I'm gonna leave it like this. I just realized that this is a mistake I did. So uh, be careful about that. So I'm gonna put here a div. I'll give it a class of uh, refresh. So because uh, refresh has a green color, I think. So, oh, orange. So yeah. So it's gonna let the user know. So simply we pass here the message, whatever is the message. And then we close the div. And semicolon. And then else, at last, all I want to do is echo and then display nothing. Nothing at all. All right. And uh, yeah. So let's see what happens. So if I go here, you friend, as we don't have any access tokens here and here, so it should be fine. All right, now what we do, we hit login and we get this. So we get here, uh, 551 is the expired time for the access token and 556 for the refresh token. If I go to database, users, we have here uh, at the same time. So if I here uh, take it out and go there. So you can see that 55150. Uh, exactly the same. We have token here. If we get a refresh token, we have uh, 556. Now the problem is here. We don't have the refresh token. Okay, why is that? So let's let's yeah, that's what we need to find out. So we're doing insert query. So okay, so we go here on top where we started. So we started here. If we have user, go ahead, secret key. And here, scroll down, we get access token generated. And then we have a refresh token. And all right, so I think I didn't generate the refresh token. And uh, because I added this data for refresh token, but I never generated it. So sorry about that, guys. And let me generate a refresh token. token and I put it here all right so I call it refresh token like this and instead of data uh, we need to call it a bit different because the data was being used for the access token so I call it so that data is used here I call it data refresh token all right and this is the one we're going to use for our refresh token. So it's, it should be fine now. All right. So what I want to do, I want to create a button that by clicking on it, we can reset it and we can test it again. So let's do that straight away. So what I do uh, before uh, checking further, I simply go to the form below here and where we created the small. Here we're going to uh, put... Uh, HP code and in a moment you will see why I'm doing this it's going to make things easier for us so it's gonna be if is set and I'm gonna put here dollar underscore session and in the session we want to check for access underscore token we're simply saying, all right, if there is access token present, we want to do something. We want to break here PHP, and we want to start here, and we want to create a button here. So I say here form action going to be, I'm going to call it clear dot PHP, and I pass clear equals yes, and I say here uh, that's it. Here I'm going to say input. And I pass input text as submit. All right, and it's gonna say value. And I'm gonna put it uh, clear tokens. 
And again, the spelling mistake. Now the access token there. So if I refresh it, this should be here. So we have a clear tokens here. Uh, now on click, it should go to clear. And you can see there it's gain. Uh, now, what do we want to do? Now further. All right, so method needs to be post. And here, now we are getting the values. So if I hit this, you can see we get the clear equals yes. Okay, all right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna create this file. So I create a here a file clear.php. And basically this file is going to be clearing some things. So I'm going to, you know, on top here, I'm gonna copy this portion or display and PHP and paste here. We need to start the session. We also need the auto load file as well. So pass here. And after that, I simply check for a few things. So here I save. And uh, what do we want to check? You want to check is set. And uh, okay, so I made a mistake here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to, because we are using the query string, and this should be like this. And I go to clear. Here we say dollar underscore get, and we want to check for clear. So we have clear equals yes. So we say clear. All right. So we have it, and we also want to check like if we have this value, and this value is equals to yes. All right. So that's a yes string we are getting there. So we want to do something. What do we want to do? We want to get the first of all. DB connection, so connection to database, copy that here, paste here. So we have the database connection and we want to update a few things. So MySQL I query. And for now, what I want to do for a dollar DB, I want to remove the refresh token for the user and as well as I'm going to remove the access token so, so that we can test again. So here, simply update users set and token equals empty string and token underscore expires equals empty string as well all right so this is going to do the trick and then we want to do the for now we have only single user so I will simply use the delete query here so I say delete from refresh token now this will delete for the current user as well as all the users for from this table so if you want to do uh, using for a current only single user you need to put something like where uh, user ID equals something but for now I'm gonna leave it this way it's, it's quite simpler for me I also want to destroy session values so session you can use session destroy or unset. So we put unset here and we pass user back. So we say here location and we just want to send user back to the original page user came from. Return. All right, looks good. Now go back here, refresh. We can see that we have these values showing up now. If I hit clear, all right, so here in this now, if I hit clear, uh, you can see it sends me back here. And here, if I go in database, uh, click users, it's empty. Refresh token, it deleted the entry. So we are simply um, working with this and it sends user back as well. So uh, that's how it is working now. So let me. Do AR simply when I hit plugin. So we have these token generated 64. And here you can see that here and here we have the token generated added and refresh token is on the 69. Let me hit it clear. These tokens are gone. So if I go here, 
it's empty and refresh it and it's gone all right so let's see one more time so that if you got confused anywhere we can clear things out so uh, currently we are on the fresh app we hit login it generates a token for us so we have the 65 the expiry time for the access token and the 610 for the refresh token so we have 6 here 6 pm and the this is the time it's doing i'm not going to clear it i'm going to check it after 65 we are going to click it again and it should work and generate the new access token and the refresh token will remain the same now if you go to the database you will have the token expiry time 65 and in refresh token we have the token and refresh token as well as expiry now let's go through the code again i go to index.php first of all i'm going to make it a bit smaller so we can see it all right so here it is so from the start so first thing first we have a form that is we are uh, basically posting data we have a field we are name login and password we pass the value name as menu and value one to three and we are checking for this so we are saying all right if the form is submitted check if the name and name uh, password is provided these two things are provided we are simply saying here if the username and password is provided then go further otherwise uh, just give this message here we are checking all right if the uh, what is the current time so now time and also we are getting the username and password we have a database connection then we are doing a query and getting the username as i you pass the username already in database so we are expecting username um, there so we are matching it, the new username provided with the database username if it is there we are running further we have we have a secret key that we, you need to store somewhere in your application you can use it and we have a server name so server name for now is local I'm setting to my local time zone the refresh, issued refresh token time and the expire uh, time so it's going to be actually 10 minutes and the refresh token will expire from the time of it issued and the same way we are expiring the access token to after five minutes okay so we just got the expired times here and it's simply now if you see here we are running a while loop for the user that we received and after that we are saying okay if there is no access token there in the database generate one and also generate a refresh token and then insert in database so we are putting those refresh token the way i clicked login it added the uh, token here expires here and refresh token here expiry of it here so that happened here all right and also we are putting these values to session we are passing a message to user all right so a uh, token is generated next time user hit login so this condition fails so it says all right we have token in the database already so go in else so here we say in case token present in database here we check current time we check all right access token if it is expired or not here it comes if access token is expired so once the access token is expired we are checking all right access token is expired let's check if the uh, refresh token is expired so it goes inside it checks for it here it checks if refresh token is expired it says to the user refresh token expired you cannot renew anything so it stops simply if refresh token is not expired we are just generating access token again so if the refresh token is there user can generate access token any number of times all right so here in the time you can see six five it is and we see that the six five thirty seven should expire so on six six we are going to hit the login and it should renew the access token and this stays the same as by the six ten uh, the refresh token will expire it's, it's still valid so that's the logic here also clear button i just added that goes here and basically we are getting the if it varies yes just delete the tokens from the database table so you can do that too so it's six six i hit the login again to renew the access token so i click here and you can see now the access token updated to six eleven and the six ten is the refresh token time so after 610 if you want to renew the access token it will fail uh, and uh, yeah that's what it, it should be like
Right, guys, so now we have the time 611. So this token is expired as well as the refresh token is expired. So if I hit log in, it, we should have a message uh, refresh token expired in this access token. We sh it should not renew because uh, as the refresh token itself gone invalid. So if I log in here, uh, and you can see the refresh token expired here. So user cannot renew uh, the access token. So you can give it in the message as well if you want to. Um, here, refresh token expired and you cannot uh, renew access token or something like that. So basically you get the idea how things work and you can implement this functionality in your application. Uh, hope you like this video, subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions, uh, or if you want me to see your code or uh, you need any help in your code, if, uh, I encourage you to join forum.ignitercode.com. Uh, link is in the description there. There's a complete forum. Uh, you can add your queries and we can help each other. We can have a, a small community uh, regarding the queries about the videos and as well as your coding issues you face in daily life. I'll try to answer your query there. So uh, if you face any uh, problem in your code, head there. I will try to have a look. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.